your Bible and you want to follow along with me, all right, I'll tell you that I'm going to be in the book of Acts. Acts. Let's say the books of the Bible to Acts. Is Acts in the Old or New Testament? The New. Ready? Same with me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. So if you have your Bibles, we're in Acts. Chapter 11, 11, and if you need assistance, Miss Raylan and Mr. Stephen are here, or Chandler, if you want to help them as well, I know that you know how to find that in your Bible too, you can also help them with that. Raylan, we've got Daniel coming, okay? All right, so Acts chapter 11 is where we're going to be today, okay? And we're going to be talking about um, a little bit after what happened with Peter last week. Who remembers what we learned about Peter last week? Do you remember? I'll give you a hint. There was a bed sheet. Hey, Daniel. Come on in, friend. I'm so glad to see you. You look very nice today. Bron, do you remember? Um, God sent another guy to find and Peter um, was on top of a building and he saw a giant bedsheet holding a bunch of animals. That's right. And God told him to eat, to kill and eat all, like, all of them. And he said, I can't do that because they're unclean. And God taught him nothing is unclean. Wow. It taught him that nobody can share the gospel. You got it spot on. You could be the teacher. You and I could just switch places right now. Do it. He was spot on. Bro, what Bron said is exactly what we learned last week. How God sent someone named, that funny name, Corn? Cornelius. Il Cornelius. Say Cornelius. Cornelius. And Cornelius was sent by God to find Peter and as Bron said, the bed sheet came down from heaven. It was full of animals. Oh, yeah. And he said to eat it. And he said, I can't because those are unclean. And because of the Jewish law, we're not supposed to eat those animals. We've only been told we can only eat certain animals. And God said, 
don't make unclean what I have made clean. And God was using that to show him that there are people that are all different. There's people of all kinds, just like there's animals of all kinds. But the gospel was for all people. And that's what we learned last week. Okay, yes, Broad. Also, before the sheep went away, it went up and down three times. It did, yes. It happened three times. Very good. So God had called Peter to tell everybody the good news about Jesus, no matter where they came from or who they were. And so Peter shared the gospel. Doug, I'm up here. Peter shared the gospel with all people, Jews, which were people that followed the Jewish laws, or Gentiles. Boys and girls, a Gentile was someone that did not follow all the Jewish laws. And so when the Jews heard that Gentile people were believing in Jesus, they were getting saved from their sin and they weren't following the Jewish laws, the Jewish people didn't really like understand that. And in fact, they said to Peter in, um, not, yeah, Peter in Acts 11, it says um, that uh, it says that they were, you know, kind of surprised that Peter was interacting, like interacting with Gentiles, people that didn't follow the Jewish laws. And they were getting saved. But remember that Peter learned the gospel is for all people. So he wasn't supposed to only preach to the Jewish people. He was supposed to preach to everybody. Yes. Um, well, I was just, that was like right at the beginning. But I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. I'm not going to read every single verse. But I'll tell you in just a minute when I do read something. But it'll be in Acts 11. Okay. So before long, the apostles and other believers, they heard that Gentiles were believing in the good news and they were surprised. So Peter told all the Jewish people, this is what I saw in my vision. And we just rehearsed that, remember, with the bedsheet and all the animals. And so Peter explained that the gospel is for what? All people. It's for everyone. And the believers they were starting to understand this. The Jewish believers were starting to understand, okay, now we know why Peter was preaching to the Gentiles. And then the believers praised God, and they understood that Jesus didn't just come for Jewish people. Jesus came for Gentiles. He came for everyone. Now, do you guys remember that guy named Stephen? And what happened to Stephen with the stones? Do you remember, Jacob? He got, stoned to death. he got stoned to death. Well, after that happened, it made a lot of believers scared. What if that happens to me? And so they ran, and they kind of scattered around, and they traveled to all kinds of places. And one of those places was Antioch. Say Antioch. Antioch. And that's a place that we're going to focus on today. Well, in those places, the believers there, they were only sharing the gospel with Jewish people. The ones that followed the Jewish laws, they weren't sharing the gospel with everybody. But there were some believers that were sharing the gospel with Jews and Gentiles. And a Gentile person, the Bible, you know, will refer to them as Greek, okay? Just different people followed different, you know, laws, diff you know, had some differences in their religious beliefs, okay? And God was with them, and a large number of Gentiles were starting to believe and trust in Jesus as well. And so the church at Jerusalem heard about these new believers. They heard that there were people that were believing in Antioch. So they sent a missionary to go to Antioch. And who was it? Peter. Nope. Really? Well, Peter was already out. Yeah, Peter was already out sharing the gospel. But there were a lot other missionaries like Peter too. So Peter was out being a missionary. But they, uh, the, the church that was in Jerusalem sent out somebody with the name that starts with the B. We said it at the beginning. It's in our word up today. Chandler? Barnabas. Barnabas. And 
Mr. Will, I have a picture of Barnabas there. And so Barnabas was a really good man, okay? So let's read about Barnabas. If you have your Bible, I'm going to read from Acts chapter 11, verse uh, 22. All right, put your finger on the little 22. And remember that your version might be a little different than mine, okay? Because there are different versions and translations. Acts 11, 22, the report of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose. That basically just means that Barnabas went to the church in Antioch, and he encouraged believers. What does it mean to encourage somebody? If you're encouraging someone, what are you doing? That word exhort means to encourage. Livy, what does it mean to encourage somebody? Distracting. Distracting? Well, maybe you say things to them to try and help them to not focus on something maybe that's making them feel bad. So it could be that in a way. Bron? They encourage you to confident by saying nice things very about good something, and yeah you do that that encourages you yeah again, and try until you, you get it so it's a way to help build someone's confidence lift them up by saying nice things to them and uh, Barnabas went there to encourage them and say I know that being a believer can be hard and there are people that are going to treat you differently but he said to them to remain faithful to the Lord and to keep going and to not, you know, not quit. And it says in verse 24, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And many people were added to the Lord. If people are added to the Lord when the Bible says that, do you know what that means? Samantha? More people are becoming Christians. That's right. That's right, girl. That just means that more people were believing. So more and more people were trusting in Jesus. The more that the missionaries went out and told, the more people were learning. And Barnabas was one of those missionaries. And his focus was to share Jesus with people. But he also went to encourage believers. And boys and girls, you, if you are a believer, you can be someone that encourages other believers. Maybe you know of other kids at your school that are Christians too. And maybe they get picked on or they get teased because they're a Christian. You could encourage them because you're one too and you could help them and say, hey, I know it's hard sometimes. But you can encourage them with a verse in the Bible. You can encourage them with a story from the Bible, maybe where another believer was being treated different like, uh, Paul, or even Jesus himself was treated different because who he was. So you can encourage believers just like Barnabas did. So even though some people tried to stop it, the gospel was being spread. Not to Jews, but Gentiles as well. And the good news is for everybody. And God calls us to encourage others and help them to love God more and to grow to know God more? Well, after Barnabas was in Antioch, he went to a place called Tarsus. Say Tarsus. Tarsus. And I guess who he was looking for? Not Peter. Cornelius? Not Cornelius. Yeah. Brought, it's somebody we talked about before you came, but you remember all the people we've talked about since you've been here. It's another, the other guy with the name that starts with a P. He used to be Saul, and now he was Paul, Paul right? Aiden, is that what you're going to say? Yep. He went looking for Paul, and he found him, and he brought Paul back to Antioch, and they stayed with the believers in Antioch for a whole year. And they were there to encourage them, and they were teaching a lot of people, 
and it's in the city or in the area of Antioch where the Bible calls people Christians for the first time. Prior to that, they were just called believers. But the, you don't see the word Christian in the Old Testament. You won't find it. Because Jesus had not yet come yet. And so in the word Christian is the word Christ. And so Christian was not a word used in the Bible until this part of, you know, the New Testament. And so now a believer is called a Christian. And if you're here today and you would say, Miss Jenna, I'm a Christian. I believed in Jesus to forgive my sin. And I know that I'm going to go to heaven one day because Jesus has saved me then will you be someone that encourages other believers? Will you be an encouragement to people that maybe are Christians like you? And don't let other people try and stop you from sharing the good news. Because the Jews said, Gentiles can't believe. The gospel's not for them. And Peter told them, yes, it is. God showed me that in a vision. The gospel's for everybody. So you can encourage believers as you share God together with people. And you can spread the good news of Jesus with people that haven't heard. But if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you have to accept the good news for yourself first. Remember that you and I have a problem called what? Sin. 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 What is sin? Let's say it together. Sin is anything we think, say, or do that breaks God's laws or makes Him sad. And the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned. That's you, that's me. Every boy, every girl, every mom, every dad, grandma, grandpa, everybody. And because of our sin, we don't deserve to go to heaven. We actually deserve punishment forever. We don't deserve a wonderful place that's perfect. We don't deserve to know God. But because God loved us so much, because He made us, and we're special to Him, he gave us his son, Jesus, who came down from heaven in the form of a baby, which we're going to be celebrating at Christmas. It will be Jesus' birthday. We celebrate his birth. He's God the Son, and Jesus grew up, was perfect, never sinned. If Jesus could sin, he couldn't be God, and Jesus never sinned. He always did what's right, and he was doing what his father wanted him to do. And when Jesus was a man, he was nailed to a cross. He had nails in each hand and his feet. He wore a crown of thorns on his head and he gave his blood. And the Bible says without the giving of blood, there's no forgiveness. Jesus had to die so sin could be taken care of. He's the only one that could pay for our sin for us. After Jesus died, they buried him. He was wrapped in, a t in, in cloth, laid in a tomb. He was in there three days, count to three. One, two, three. On the third day, he came back to life. Jesus appeared to large groups of people, his disciples. They saw him die on Friday, and then they saw him alive on Sunday. And then Jesus spent some time on earth, and then he ascended back to heaven where he's living today. And he says in John 1.12, it says, but as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become a child of God to those who believe in his name. If you believe and trust that Jesus is the only one that can pay for your sin, you can become God's child. You don't leave your family on earth. You just have two. You have a heavenly family and an earthly family. And one day you can spend forever with God in heaven. And while you're living on the earth, you can have a friendship with God while you're here and it will last in heaven. I know that there are some of you in this room that have already trusted Jesus and you are a child of God. But maybe some of you in here are not. You don't think you've ever asked Jesus to forgive you or believe and trust in him. That's a decision only you can make. I can't do it for you, but I can help you. So if you ever have questions about that, you can always come ask me. You can talk with your mom and dad, Pastor Matt and Pastor Justin. We can help you, Pastor Jace. So any of us can help you with that, okay? So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to move on to the next thing. Yeah, Lord, I thank you for this day. We thank you for the beautiful, cool air outside. You made the air. 
You made the sun that's shining. You made the jackets to keep us warm. God, we thank you so much for who you are as the creator and king of the universe. Thank you for your love that we sang about, that there's nothing that can separate us from your love. Even though we're sinners, you still love us. I pray, God, that you would help us to be like Barnabas, that we would encourage other believers that um, we know and that you would help us to spread the message of Jesus to everybody, no matter who they are, where they come from, what they've done. Thank you for this reminder today. We pray for the boys and girls that aren't with us today and volunteers. We pray you'd bring them back together with us next week. And Lord, we just ask your blessing over the rest of our time we have together and this day. In your name I pray, amen. God had called Peter to tell everyone the good news about Jesus, no matter who they were or where they came from. So Peter shared the gospel not only with Jews, but with Gentiles. The Gentiles in Caesarea heard Peter's message and believed. God gave his Holy Spirit to these new believers and they were baptized. Before long, the apostles and other believers throughout Judea heard the Gentiles had believed the good news about Jesus. They were surprised, so Peter shared about the vision God had given to him of the sheet of clean and unclean animals and his encounter with Cornelius. Peter explained that the gospel is for all people. Then the believers praised God and understood that Jesus had come for the Gentiles too. At the same time, believers who scattered after Stephen's murder had traveled to places like Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, Syria. In those places, the believers only shared the gospel with the Jews. But some believers from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and preached the gospel to the Greeks too. God was with them, and a large number of the Greeks believed the good news. The church at Jerusalem heard about these new believers, so they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Barnabas was a good man. He loved God and was full of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit. When Barnabas arrived, he saw that God was gracious to these believers. He was glad and encouraged them to keep following God. Even more people trusted in Jesus. Then Barnabas left Antioch and went to Tarsus to look for Paul. Mm. He found Paul and brought him back to Antioch. They stayed with the church in Antioch for a year, teaching large groups of people. Jesus' followers were first called Christians at Antioch. Even though some people tried to stop it, the gospel spread throughout the earth, not only to Jews, but also to Gentiles. The good news about Jesus is for everyone. God calls us to celebrate when others believe and help them know and love Jesus more.